Well, thank you for having me. Um, I have lots of slides for only 40 minutes. Uh, so hopefully I'm going to get I'm going to get through and answer some of your questions after. Um, so um, yes, I'm Canadian. I'm from the city of uh, Quebec City. Um, so this is uh, why I have a French accent. Uh, so my first language is French. My second language is uh, is English, and my third language is Spanish. So um, I'll try to uh, uh, to to uh, to keep with the, with the English today. Um, so like he mentioned, um, some years ago I was asked to. Uh, coach the women's national team. We didn't have a team before. And they asked me, Andre, would, would you like to coach women's in baseball? And my first reaction at that time was, uh, no, I don't, I don't want to coach women. That's never going to happen. Um, and guess what? After f I coached them 15 years, and I think we've uh, accomplished uh, pretty well after 15 years. I decided to resign from my position after the World Cup in 2018, participated in eight World Championships, and brought the team to the second place in the world, and just in front of the USA, which is always fun for us, uh, uh, obviously. And, um, and, and then uh, I, I think we share things in common. Um, we have no rights to be in front of the USA in baseball. That's their national sport. We're a hockey nation, and uh, we don't belong there. But we did things differently, and we had good, good success, like you did with football. You guys had fantastic success. I think you still have some good successes. So we're sharing some of the same uh, culture and some of the same successes as well over the years. Um, last year, or this year, um, I accepted a position um, uh, in France. Uh, so for me, it was good to go back and teach and coach in French for the first time in about 20 years. And I was coaching Team France, their first ever team in women's baseball. And we uh, captured the European Championship and then we qualified for the World Cup next year. So that was pretty exciting. And that was a new challenge for me because I like challenges and I like to get out of my comfort zone. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about it today. Like I said, also, I'm also a university professor. So for me, it's a way to stay connected with this generation. I think it's really important uh, as we get older to stay connected with the youth, to ask them what they like, to ask them what they want, so we can uh, make better decisions in our sports system. I was fortunate to talk to all kinds of different organizations, some of them that you probably recognize there, and, and, and I learned a lot from them as well. And I'm going to share some best practices from organizations that I've worked with and some of the changes that they, are, that they have implemented in their sports system so they can get better. And, and sometimes, you know, we, we think it's complicated, um, um, and, and we think we don't have all the resources possible, but the main problem sometimes is we do have the resources, but we just make poor decisions, like this guy there, right? So that's exactly what we don't want to do. We want to stress the importance of having the good resources and take care of them and make good decisions for our sports system. So today my role is to get you thinking. So I'm going to throw, like I said, rock in the pounds. Sometimes you're going to get uh, some water. Uh, some, it's going to make you think, uh, so that's going to be my role today. So that, that's what I'm all about when I talk, okay? to make you think. I'm not going to give you answers, but I'm going to make you think. That's what it's all about. Whoops. Sorry, I've got to go back. So if you go to the beach, I, wanna, I was in the beach this summer. And when you walk on the, you walk on the beach and you see kids playing with the uh, sandcastle, right? And when you see this, you might think, this is outstanding, I cannot find better than this. Like we do sports systems sometimes, you know, we find the answer and there's nothing else you could do. We cannot get better. But then you walk a little bit more and then you find this thing. You say, okay, well, there's better than what I thought. Someone raised the bar. And the same thing is happening in school, same thing is happening in sports system around the world. There's always someone who's going to raise the bar. And you think that's the end of it. And you keep walking. It's a long walk on the beach, and you find this. Say, okay, okay, I, I didn't even think that was possible, okay? And then you open your eyes to something else. You open your eyes to new possibilities, new opportunities. And there's even more people that are more creative. And this guy was here. He put lights in it, okay? So you thought you've seen everything, but again, the bar was raised. And in the sports system, it's the same also. There's always better somewhere. So you need to open your eyes to new op opportunities, new, new things. So since I'm in Iceland, I was looking for a slide that was something related to ice, and I found this one. 
that is pretty good. So, so, so today my, my goal is to get your brain to unfreeze everything that you've heard, listened over the years. Try to think about things that you could change maybe in your system and try to refreeze everything after and to leave this room here with new ideas, new opportunities. So this is kind of the cornerstone uh, of our programs in Canada. We, we, we believe in three things. Having good programs, I'm going to focus mainly on this today. Having good places, good environment for athletes to succeed, for people to have success, and good people. So if we don't have good people, if we don't have good decision makers, if we don't have good coaches, if we don't have good officials and good people surrounding our athletes, we're not going anywhere. Okay, so in any good uh, practice, best practice around the world, we need to focus on these three uh, major fundamental thing, which is good programs, good places, good people. Okay, and today, because I don't have much time, I'm going to speak almost solely on, on, the group, on the good program. So this is a Canadian model that has been used by several countries. It's called the long-term athlete development model. And maybe some of the key features it goes from bottom to top. It goes from active start to train to win. And on the left side here, we got what we call active for life. No longer we're using the good old triangle where we're losing our athletes along the way and they're just lost in the crowd. Now we're trying to keep everybody in our system. So you look, look at, the, uh, at the bottom three stages here, active start, fundamentals, learning to train, which are the basis of what we call uh, physical literacy. In physical literacy, we believe that if we develop a good system that develops physical literacy, kids can go from one sport to another, that's one thing, but they could get older and they could do anything they want and stay durable and stay active for the rest of their lives. I think that's really important. It's not only about the elite athlete, Olympics, professional, because that's probably only 0.1% of the people we're going to deal with. But we're talking about the main focus is on the 99.9% .9 of the athletes of the people that we're dealing with. You, you're going to see other models out there. This is the US model. It's called the ADM. Same thing. Okay? They use our model, change the name, and create their own. Okay? So that's exactly what it is. Okay? Um, yeah, because they came to our thing and they just took it, and, and that's fine. Okay? We have no problem with that. Our key thing right now is multi-sport. Okay, for physical literacy, we believe that if we, you specialize early in a sport, you play football at six years old or eight years old, 12 months a year, this is not working. Okay, if you play handball, you play hockey, you do gymnastics or whatever sport you decide to do at a young age and you decide to specialize early, you're gonna break at some point. This is not working. That model is not working and we've seen it fail in so many countries. Okay, so we're hitting it hard right now in our country in order to promote multi-sport, in order especially to educate parents, because that's the main problem, educate parents so they can make better educated decisions. So we got to rem remember this. So kids are not adults in miniature. They have special needs. They are different. And when we do programming, when we're surrounded with coaches, we got to make sure that we address their needs and not our needs as adults. It's totally different. So this is the number of days you have from the moment you're born and the moment you get to 12 years old. So you have to decide in your sport, in your organization, what you want to do with those 4,380 days that are available for you to develop physical literacy. They're all available for you. Okay? They're available for parents. They're available for sports organization. What are you going to do with, the, with these days? Okay, so that's a question you need to, add to, to answer, not me. Another key thing here, girls are not boys. Totally different things. I learned it, okay, like by co starting to coach women, like from day one to day two, coaching men and then I coach women. Ooh, different thing. Different animals, right? Okay, different needs and different ways of, of teaching them, different ways to approach them, okay? I got to tell you right now, if you would ask me to go back and teach boys, I will decline, okay? Because the, the time I spent with my athletes, female athletes over the years, is probably the best time of my career, and there's no way I'm gonna go back and teach boys, okay? 
No way. Okay. Um, so that that's a key that's a key slide, and I could spend probably half a day talking about it. Unfortunately, I can't. Um, but this explains the difference between boys and girls. Obviously, at the top, you're going to see this is females um, uh, section, and at the bottom, this is male section. What you need to remember is that in everything that we do, females will mature earlier, girls will mature earlier than boys. Okay, that's the nature of things. Usually, it's about 18 months to 24 months before uh, they, they will mature earlier. So, like I said to the group yesterday, talking to the ladies here, when you were in high school, this probably explained why you were more attracted by older guys, older boys, than the boys your age, because they're more mature and more and more intelligent most of the time. Also, okay. So, when you look at when you look at this here, so at each moment of the growth spurt. The growth spurt is right here. Okay, so this is the key thing here. So if you start to measure growth spurt, you can decide at each moment you should emphasize some of the key athletic abilities, such as skills development, speed, stamina, strength, and so on and so forth. Okay, if you don't measure, if you don't use the data, because we live in an era of data, you're going to lose the battle. You need to measure. You need data. I will not stress it enough. You need data in this world right now. Okay? Give you an example. Um, speed, for an example. For little boys, seven to nine years old, uh, girls six to eight years old, this is the key moment to develop speed. Okay? If speed is not important in your sport, it is your responsibility still to teach it because we're developing physical literacy. We're all in it together. It's not about you, it's about the kids. And you don't know what they're going to become after. Because before growth spurt, you cannot predict anything. You cannot predict anything. You cannot do talent ident identification before growth spurt. It's a waste of time because you don't know what's going to happen. Okay? So when I say you need to measure, how do you know when you're here? How do you know when the growth spurt is starting? The limbs will, go, will start to grow. Arms, legs, you need to measure. Arm span, that tells you that the curve is starting to go up. Okay? The trunk will, will grow last. So you need to measure sitting height. When it starts to grow, you're decelerating. Now you can start working on strength, strength development. You need to measure, you need the data. But the most pro problematic thing, you know what it is? is we all, it all happens differently for the human being. Between the age of 12 and 17, can happen for me at 12, can happen for you at 16. But we're all in it together. So the coaches at that age group is really, really important because this is where we make or break an athlete or person there regarding sport development. Okay? So that age group there, 12 to 17, really, really important. Here's a key example. Okay? So training and competition is often, is often based on chronological, chronolog chronological age, thank you. Uh, so that means that all the 12-year-old play together, the 14-year-old play together. So this image here is kids about 14, 15 years old. They're all playing together. What's the problem? Number 21, add this growth spurt a bit earlier than others. Okay? So what most coaches will do with that number 21? They're going to tell him, you go underneath the basket, we're going to pass you the ball, and all you have to do is just do this, and we're going to win lots of games. It's going to be awesome. Okay? It's going to work for a little bit, and then what's going to happen? Number 15, 25, 51 will start to grow up a little bit. So suddenly the ball doesn't reach 21 anymore because the others are taller. But because of bad coaching, that 21 doesn't know how to dribble the ball, doesn't know how to move left or right, and what's going to happen to 21? He's out. We just lost him. Okay? So that's what I'm telling you, that coach is so, coaching is so important. Dealing with the age group is so important, and you need to pay attention to that age group. Sometimes between the age of 12 to 16, they could be four to five years apart, as far as maturity, as far as growth. So if you don't address it, if you don't program things accordingly, again, bad things will happen. So between the age of 12 and 18, you got about 2,000 days only to deal with. What are you going to do with those 2,000 days in your sport in order to address this problem? Are you going to make proper decision to deal with that number 21? Or are you just going to let it go and see what happens? You need to address it. 
Because if you don't, they're going to become spectators. And this is not what we want, right? Okay, we don't want our kids to become spectators. We want them to be durable, active for the rest of their lives. All right? So we need to take care of them. So this is the equation for change, because we're talking, for, we're talking about change here. We're talking about changing the way we do things. Okay? And I want you to, guys to look at the bottom line here, okay? because there's five key elements in change. You need a vision. You need some skills. You need some incentive. You need resource. And you need an action plan. If you focus on those five elements, you will get the change. If there's one thing missing, let's take one for an example. Um, let's, take, let's take the first one at the top there. If you don't have a vision, you have everything else. Everybody will be confused. So if you are a decision maker, a federation leader, you need to set that vision for the rest of your group. Okay? If you have the vision, you don't have any skills, and you're going to develop some anxiety, and you won't be able to perform properly. Okay? So that's the equation for change. And all those five blocks at the bottom will be key in order to, for change to, uh, to, to, to implement. And the Japanese are very good with this. They have a fantastic word that I use all the time. It's called Kaizen. Kaizen means change is good. We're always trying to find a way to get better at everything. I don't know if you guys ever travel to Japan. If you go to Japan, pay attention to the um, airport security. They figured it out. You don't wait. <laughs> they figured it out, OK? They look at it. We have a problem. They solved it, all right? So what got you here, the successes you got in football, for example, or anything in your, in your sport, won't get you there. So I like that quote. What got you here won't get you there. You need to rethink if you want to get, you keep your edge, keep your advantage, because you know when you celebrate, you know what's, what's happening? When you celebrate, others behind you are working hard because they want to pass you. So you cannot sit there still doing nothing. You need to find new ways to challenge yourself, challenge your sport. Because at the end of the day, still ice concept. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, like we, um, we, we want our athlete to be the iceberg, to be solid, to be above the water. But what people don't see is everything underneath the water that makes the iceberg emerge on top of the water. And what you see underneath there is physical literacy, is good coaching, is good decisions, is good governance, is everything that surrounded the athletes. Because at the end of the day, we are athlete-centered and coach-driven. Okay? If you don't focus on that fundamental basement there, then obviously you're going to be a little bit more fragile. Okay? And if you're fragile, if you're in that situation, just like wind like today, outside, and it's over. Okay? So you need that solid foundation. Nice quote from Albert Einstein, insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I hear it all the time. People telling me, you know, I, I've seen it all. I have 25 years of experience. And probably heard it before. Can't learn anything anymore. But when you search a little bit on those individuals, what is it? Those who were with me yesterday? They don't have 25 years of experience. They have what? Do you remember? 25 times the same year of experience. Okay? They always keep the same mistake, and they're wondering, I don't know, I don't understand why I'm not getting good results. But they keep repeating the same mistakes. They're not open-minded to change, right? So it's always a better way of doing things. Okay? There must be a better way of doing things in everything that we do, and especially in sports. I'm going to get a little bit more into the details of it. And, and, and if there's one takeaway from this presentation today, is don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. You're going to find magic. You're going to find all kinds of great things outside your comfort zone. You might not like it at the beginning. Okay? Well, I've never done it before. But if you start to do it, you're going to see awesome results. I'm going to give you examples and best practices as we, as we go here. So you know this guy, right? Um, and in each of our brain, and everybody has it, we have what we call the lizard brain. It's called amygdala, okay, in other words, and we have it in our brain. And this is kind of the part of our brain when we're not comfortable in a place, when we're not comf comfortable in a situation, freaks out a little bit, doesn't like it, okay? So this thing in your brain, um, it's not going to disappear. It's there to stay, okay? But when it's tickled a little bit, it means that you are at the right place. 
It means that it gets you out of your comfort zone. Okay? Let's go a little bit deeper here. So when the lizard freaks out, it's a sign that you're in the right place. Okay? So when you're panicking a little bit about a change that you could do in your sport, you're not too sure if I'm doing the right thing, it means that you are in the right thing. Okay? You're going to make some tests. You might fail, and failing is not a bad thing. Okay? Here's the shift. I'm going to ask you to, to think differently here. We used to punish mistakes in our athletes. We used to feeling ashamed of mistakes. And we used to avoid situations where we might make mistakes. So I want you guys to shift your paradigm in your brain, okay, to this. We're going to celebrate mistakes. We're going to make lots of them. And we're going to seek out mistakes. Because this is how we learn. And how you get good at something, okay? How we get good at something. Believe you can learn, be engaged, stretch outside your comfort zone, do it a lot, make a lots of mistakes, and do it more. That's it, I that, found it. That was it. I found it. <laughs> So where were the coaches there? There's no coaching, right? And think about your competition system. Think about your environment you put your athletes, athletes in. And how often do you let them make mistakes? How often do you let them figure out by themselves how they can fix a problem? And, and we live in a society now where we want to give everything to them. We want to give them feedback right away and so on and so forth so that we can, they can figure it out quicker. Okay, but the way he handled that situation, he's going to get it every time after. It's stuck in his brain right now. And if you notice when he said, I found it, it got in his brain at some point and he found it by himself. Okay, so try to think about your system and see if you're doing too much to, uh, uh, to, for, for your kids versus letting them figure out by themselves. Okay, and it's, it's, it's about goal setting but it's also about goal getting. I don't use goal setting anymore. I think it's too weak. I use goal getting. It's more powerful. It's showing that we're getting there, that we're gonna get the goals, okay? It's one thing to set goals, and we're all good setting goals, but when we ever never do anything about them, we're not getting anywhere, okay? So if you have any goals for your organization about changing the system and everything, you need to get them. So I wanna define what meaningful competition is. <laughs>
I'll stop it there, okay? You got the message, right? Um, so is this meaningful? Who's learning here? Who's having fun other than their crazy parent who was yelling in the back, <laughs> right? Nobody. Teammates not having fun. Opponents not having fun. You look at the official there, like he's, I don't know what to do here. That kid's too strong, right? Okay. So in everything that you guys do in your competition system, you try to make it meaningful. Okay. What does it mean to be meaningful? It supports athlete learning. You got to make sure that people are learning, athletes are learning in that environment. The competition reinforces development of skills. Are we teaching to the test? What we train in, in, in training session, are we testing it in competition or not? The athlete re remains engaged throughout the competition trying to achieve specific goals. Was that the case in the video? Absolutely not. The competition is relatively close, such that the athlete believes they have a chance for success. Was that the case in the video? Not at all. Okay? For four key points that you need to keep in mind. And that's a key, and probably seen it before. If you're in a teaching world, you've probably seen this before. Below, you got the participant skill level. I'm not good at something. I'm very good at something, okay? And then you got the task difficulty. It's really easy to do. It's really difficult to do. If you're on the too extreme there, okay, you won't have fun. You're gonna get anxiety. You're gonna get bored. And at the end of the day, what's gonna happen? You're gonna quit, okay? So your role as organization coaches is to bring everything in the middle. So it's challenging for the kids, for everybody involved in the game. So we've got to teach to the test, but we've got to make better tests. Okay, we're not good at, at, at doing better tests. So, and keep in mind that at the end of the day, we've got to make sure that our athlete is solid. And I like to give that example that uh, the athlete is the uh, top of the table with four strong legs that are technical, tactical, physical, and mental. If you remove one of those legs, what's going to happen to the table? It won't fall. It will stay up, a little bit unstable, okay? But if I sit on the corner of the legs that has been removed, now it's going to collapse. So if there's one problem happening, whether it's mental, physical, technical, or tactical, boom, everything's finished, okay? So you need to figure out in your sport what value do you give to all those, of those four legs depending on the stage of development and to build everything accordingly. Here's a success story in my sport. Um, traveled the country years ago and look at how the game was played with our kids. And, and I know baseball is not uh, something here, okay? That's okay. But what, what I've seen uh, is the game being played where we, we would put a t-ball, like a little stick like this, a ball on, on top of it, and then little Johnny would be here and hit the ball, and there's maybe 10 or 12 other girls and boys on the field doing nothing, playing in the grass, picking their nose, say hi, mom, Terrible experience, okay? So we were losing lots of kids. Lots of kids were saying, hey, I'm looking at football. I think I'm gonna go play football, it's way better, right? So we changed it, we created rally cap. So basically, stolen idea, martial arts, they got color belts. I said, we got hats, I'm gonna use color hats. And I'm, in my sport, I got running, hitting, receiving, throwing, and basic mental skills, the ABCs, agility, balance, coordination and I'm gonna create a system where kids can achieve different levels. We are producing now, 10, maybe 10, 12 years now that we're doing this, about 30,000 hats a year. We have a major, major sponsor, about a quarter, quarter million a year, that, 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 that drives the process, that drives the program. The kids are not leaving our sport anymore, and even better, they're developing skills, and when they get to the next level, they're well prepared, and you know what? We got. Funny enough, we got more people, more players playing professionally right now. I don't know why, because we're doing probably a good job with this, okay? And we created this also, because in my, 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 my trip around the country, found out that the coaches were not really doing a good job and overcoaching, trying to give the kids too much. Created the absolutes. Let's, talk, let's take one of them. Absolutes 11 means 11 years old means 11 things that I want the coach to focus on during the course of the year only. That's it. 13, 13 years old, 13 elements. 15, 15 years old, 15 elements. Looks like this. That's a grid like this. That's all. It's simple. Okay? But when you look at this, that's 11 years old. Seven of them, of those elements, are technical. Because at 11 years old, that's the 
golden age for skills development. So we're focusing a lot on skill development. There's only one tactical. There's one mental, because our sport is highly mental, we need to start doing a little bit more. And there, there's one phys physical also. Easy. Everyone understands it. We have coach education, we have a, we have a clinic on, on those absolutes, and people understand why we're doing it. Really simple, okay? You know these guys? I'm sure you do, right? Same approach, progression approach, stage by stage approach, just presented differently. That's how they present, they present it. Small blacks to all blacks. Progression from left to right. Easy. They have a vision. They have a model. They have a model that everyone is following. Nobody is debating it because everyone was part of it when they developed it and it makes sense. And do they have success? I think they do. I know I'm going to get the, the red card or the yellow card soon. Okay? And I know in football, the, the red card and the yellow card are not really positive. Um, so the French, right? It's not really positive. So the French uh, Football Federation, I had a chance to work with them. And they, um, they add the, uh, added the blue card. So what they do at the end of each game for kids is they gather the team together without the coach and the players together. They determine which player on the other team showed respect, good leadership, or other qualities, and they give the blue card to the other team, to one athlete. So when we talk about developing life skills, like an acknowledging work from the other team, this is a pretty cool practice, okay? And it's a bit more positive than the red and the, and the yellow card, okay? The blue card, okay? That works for them too. So adjusting the rules. So in order to be more meaningful, you can adjust the rules. You can fix that. And keep in mind, the coaches will always coach to the system, okay? If I decide tomorrow that in football moving forward that uh, you cannot use your feet anymore is your head only, the coaches will teach it, okay? They, you, you decide what you want to do, okay? Um, at home, we had a big debate on uh, keeping score. Should we keep score or not? Okay, people say, well, if we don't keep, sport, keep, keep score, it defeats the purpose of sport. There's a big debate at home. I don't know if it's the same thing here, but I see it happening in other countries as, other countries as well, okay? I think it's wrong. I, don't, I, just, I just don't think we're scoring the right thing. So I'll use football because you know football, okay? So how do you determine who wins in football? Tell me. Number of goals scored, right? Okay. Who said that that way of scoring, that it's happening for professional on TV and everything, who said that it was appropriate for kids in development? We did. We did. What if we would score something else to determine the winner? Think about it, okay? What if we would score something at execution? Every time you teach something that is important based on your skills matrix, then during the game it's happening, you give your team a, score, a point. What would, what would happen at that time? If you change the rule the way the, the game is scored, tell me. What would happen at the next training session? Next practice? The coach? The what? Okay, so they will, they will, the coaches will focus on those execution because they want to win. But if they execute those elements well, are they becoming better athletes? There you go, okay? By changing the rule, changing how you score the game, you change coach behavior and you increase, improve, at the same time, athlete development. Totally outside the box, I'm telling you, okay? It's working, we're piloting it in our sport, we're giving points on defense, which has never happened, okay? But uh, my coaches now are freaking out, like I'm catching the ball in the air, I gave a point, oh, shit, I got to practice it in my practice. Perfect. We're going to have better athletes, okay? Because at the end of the day, keeping, sc keeping score, kids will always keep scoring. Even if you don't publish the score, you don't say it's one nothing, 2 nothing. kids are not stupid. They know who won and who, and who lost the game, okay? Here's another creative. You know the mulligan in golf? Who can, me what the mu who can tell me what the mulligan is? Second chance, so you just missed a shot and that doesn't count, okay? Guess what? In Canada, we're using the mulligan and trampoline. Huh? And trampoline. Imagine the scenario. Little Susie, she trains for trampoline and she goes for first competition. 
Okay? She's like eight years old in trampoline. She's very nervous. She work on her routine and everything and shaking a little bit. It's normal, right? Or it could be a little boy too. And she starts a routine. Jump. Jump. Is that the blue card? No? Okay. Start. And for whatever reason, she fell. Okay? If we keep our rule the way they are right now, the judges will say, oh, we're going to deduct points because, you know, she fell and everything. But we're using the, she can use the mulligan. She can say mulligan. And then I, she can do it again. And we erase what we just saw. The judges will not count any, anything that they saw, and they're going to focus on the second chance. Is this athlete-centered? Is it about the kid? It is about the kid. So take an idea from a sport, look at another sport. How can we implement it? It's working. Okay. So um, the goal for you guys moving forward is to get small wins. It's like driving your car. Your headlights on your car are not showing two kilometers in advance. They're showing 200 meters in advance only. Small wins. What can you do tomorrow in your coaching practice, in your sport organization, your federation, your leagues, your clubs, in order to change so it's more athlete-centered? I'm not giving you all the solutions because at the end of the day, you're going to figure them out. Okay? And it might mean that you might have to do something you've never done before. If you want to get something you've never got before. So it's getting out of your comfort zone. To get what you've never had, you have to do something you've never done before. And for certain people, it might be panicking. And that's why we need great people. Remember our first slide? Good programs, good people, good, practice, good, uh, good places. You need good people. If we don't have the right people, change the people. As simple as that. We need to change the people. We need to have the right people in order to have success. And we need to be creative. In order to be creative, I'm telling you, it's going to be chaos. Because this is how we get creative, this is how we get to success. Okay? Creative, being creative, means going through chaos. You're going to get resistance. Like I was telling the, the group yesterday, the first time I presented my new way of playing baseball with the hats and everything, I came in front of the room, explained everything, and then they're all looking at me like I'm coming from another planet. No reaction. Silence. And I packed my time, okay, they're not ready. So I went, went back. Two years later, I came back, serious to God. Same presentation, same slides, okay? And then one person said, oh, I think that's a good idea. We should, oh, my, I have a friend. So yeah, yeah, you want to try it? Yeah, they, they, they did a pilot. Another guy, I, I think I'm going to pilot it too. So they did some pilots, worked perfectly. They talked to each other. The year after, it was all across Canada. Okay, so you're going to find those people your followers, because you guys are all leaders, you're going to find those followers and you need to make sure that you uh, nurture your followers are so important people. And if we work together, it's amazing how much we can, you can accomplish when it does not matter who gets the credit. Right? We don't care who gets the credit. We care about the kids, we care about the athletes, we care about the success of the organization. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about the people on your board of directors, the decision makers. It's about the kids and what they need. So we need to get better at understanding what are the needs of our athletes, what are the needs of our people, so we can make better decisions. Okay? And there's no trying, guys. Yoda said it. You do or do not, there is no try. Okay? And keep that in mind. Like, like, I'm going to say the same thing I said yesterday. Let's say that after my presentation in a couple of minutes, I invite you, all of you, to a restaurant for a good lunch and everything, okay? And she answers, uh, I'll try to go. Is she coming? Not coming, okay? Every time you answer, I'll try, you're not doing it, okay? So make sure you do or do not. There's no gray zone. You want to get success, you need, you need to go at it. Right on time, not bad, yep. okay? Yep.